Just start over. We're at. Yep. Hi, this is Mike the Baptist. Hey, welcome to Mike the Baptist. Just, just like that. Just like that. Uh, we're starting over, actually. We, we had a little bump or two there. First time we tried this today, but it's okay. It's all okay. We're starting over, and it's going to even be even better this time. Couldn't be any worse. It couldn't be any worse. Uh, <laughs> it could. Uh, I'm Mike the Baptist. Good to have you back with us. H.D. Jones. Hey, it's good to be back at the table. Preacher friend of mine. He came back, and uh, like I was saying the first time we tried this, it's, I'm encouraged that you came back <laughs> and, uh, and filled your position there. And we always look forward to hearing what you have to say. Now, a lot of people say that to you in a really <laughs> reverent way. I don't really, when I say yeah. that to you, it's yeah. a little different. Yeah, you but. say it kind of like with a grin, like yeah. we don't know what's going to happen. That, exactly. Yeah. But you understand that. So. <laughs> reverent would not be the word I use. Yeah. Not exactly. Yeah. Good Good that you came back. Well, I appreciate the invite. And Neil Andrews is back. Hey. For the first time in a long time. Since last year. Since last year. Neil was not here since last year. And it's not Neil's fault. It's uh, we changed the program a little, and it wound up now being three people. And so we were juggling four people schedules there for a while. Now it's condensed a little. So, but anyway, long story short, which is a little late for that, but the new format. <laughs> this is Neil's first uh, venture back in with our new shorter format. Yes. Plus, he's been on vacation. He's, he's he has. He's crisp, man. He's ready. He's to crisp. Get I understand he's been to uh, South Beach, Miami. Yeah. So. Learning some techno music. Learning some techno music moves, <laughs> yeah. and, but he made it back alive, and his hair's not a weird color. <laughs> Kudos. Thank you. Hey, anyway, glad you're back, too. Thanks. Miss talking to you. Good to be you. here. And uh, so I guess the only thing I've got to say here is www.mikethebaptist.com. You will find old episodes, new episodes, merchandise. Uh, well, it's a website, so just go there and look around. What if you have questions or comments? Yes, that's what I was getting to. Email us something. Okay. Uh, comments at MikeTheBaptist.com. Does that sound like an email address? It doesn't sound right in my head. Yeah, comments at okay. Mike the Baptist. Okay, yes. Yeah, send, send us an email. I got an interesting email a couple of days ago from a lady who said, when are you taping again? I said, well, You said depends. we don't use tape. It's no tape. It's all digital. But anyway, she wants to cook us something to review. So... Uh, here in a couple of weeks, when we do a, a taping episode, we will have something to review. I miss those days. Yes, HD, your uh, your constant prodding of people <laughs> yes. to guilt them into sending you something has paid off. I mean, you know, you're, yeah. you're supposed to feed the ox, right? That's biblical. Oh, you know what it's going to be, though? Homemade ice cream. It probably <laughs> <laughs> You don't do dairy, right? right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, life is fun. Speaking of fun... The only comment uh, negatively that I have had on our new shorter format is that the front porch visit is shorter. There are people who like a longer front well, porch visit. Lumber prices are up, so we had to shorten our front porch. That's clever. Ooh, I like That's that. That's very clever. While your mind is on clever, <laughs> <laughs> let's go right to the front porch and have a quick little visit here. About, uh, you know, I was thinking about some interesting topics. This week and next week are going to be related topics on the front porch. We're going to cover one side of the topic today, and we'll cover the other side of the topic next week. Today, I want to uh, talk about foods we will not eat. Or maybe not will not, but if you do eat it, you might eat it begrudgingly just to you know make somebody happy. But I was just thinking about there are certain foods, and, and I'll kick us off here. I'll, I'll tell you a couple things of, of mine. Well, it's not that I don't like spaghetti. I do like spaghetti. But the first five or six years I was married, uh, I ate a lot of spaghetti. And I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, I took a hiatus for 30 years there from spaghetti. And now I will eat it again, though. Never. So if you get some hamburger meat and onions cooked together and put it in there with the right sauce and butter me up some good toast, I'll sit down and eat that and drink a glass of milk just fine but so i just wanted to uh, shout out to the spaghetti thing there that uh, it's not that i don't like it it's just that 
Sounds like it was traumatic. Yeah, it's kind of like when you when you almost drown. Yeah. You don't want to drink a water for a while. <laughs> it's kind of like that. So the other thing that I will not, I'll refuse to ever eat this again. Mm. And I say that because I ate it once. Uh, we were at a restaurant. I cannot even remember. I, I've blocked this so far out of my mind, I don't even remember the restaurant. But I'm looking through the menu, and I'm a little adventurous. And on this particular menu, the word eel appeared. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I've never eaten eel. And I'm thinking, it looks like a snake, so it must be like meat, like on a chicken. Like, you know, they say rattlesnake and stuff tastes kind of like chicken. I ordered, I ordered me up a plate of eel. And I've never eaten a slug uh, off the sidewalk. But if I were imagining <laughs> how to compare that dish of eel to something, that's where my mind would go. It would, it would be like a mouthful of slug, mm. uncooked, right off the sidewalk. Wow. The first bite, this is how smart I am. The first bite, I'm faking it and thinking, I just need to be a little more cultured and appreciate what's going on here. <laughs> And I almost couldn't swallow that, but I did. <laughs> the second bite, yep. it's over. Yep. No, it's over. So those are my – So uh, did the eel make you eel? If I had kept going, I was fixing to be very eel, eel <laughs> because it was just like wow. – I just couldn't do it. So a funny eel story real quick. Okay. You remember back in the day – funny we, eel story. Uh, right, <laughs> right. We had yes. the eel skin purses and wallets and all that stuff. Uh-huh. Well, I was working at this place, and the lady that was receptionist was kind of ditzy. And we had a person come in that was selling eel bags and all that stuff. And she gets on, she gets on the PA system to this whole company, and she's like, "There's an eel salesman in the lobby." I repeat, <laughs> there is an eel salesman in the lobby. To which two of the guys who were trained EMT on the side. Go running out to their V. An eel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is funny. I know, right? Maybe. The true ones are always funny. Right? Okay, yeah. since you're being funny already, okay. I'm, I'm going to move on to you <laughs> I, now. I really just don't like parts that are inside the animal. Like gizzards. <laughs> of course not. Hearts, <laughs> uh, chitlins. I just cannot bring myself to eat that stuff. And when I was a kid, my grandmother would fry up. Uh, calf liver Mm -hmm. and you know it was one of those moments the stare down like my dad said you're going to eat that or you're going to sit there all night (laughs) well I was going to sit there all night and finally you know take one little bite and go run into the bathroom spit it out and I think I chopped up a little bit more of it and put it under the cushion of the chair (laughs) which led to some Discipline. <laughs> yes, exactly. And probably should but have. I have never. Mm-mm, I just don't. Mm-mm, I, I no more. I can't do any of that stuff. Are you saying that you don't? You don't even like fried. Like, nope. Don't like fried chicken liver. Nope. Nope. Huh. It's, it's, to me, it just stinks. I don't want it. Mm. You've never had haggis. I, I guess not. Oh, that's that Irish stuff, isn't that's it? Scottish. Scottish. Yeah. Isn't it like it? It's like all mashed up. It's or all the organs. Yeah. yeah. I'm out. In, a, in a pie. Is what's blood pudding? Blood pudding is a different thing, but it's got blood in it. Yeah. It's almost black, actually. Yeah, see, now I don't know that I would eat that. Mm-hmm. They put that on their breakfast buffets in the morning. Yeah, I don't think mm-hmm. I would eat that. I might not eat, eat, eat anything in the tray next to it either. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, just, that just doesn't sound good. So no liver. Mm-mm, I'm out. You're just, that's your. Yep. Hmm. No liver, no gizzards, no <laughs> any of the chitlins. You know. Chicken gizzards are actually good, but they're so hard to chew up. You, you just chew and you chew. I couldn't. And, I couldn't do that. Yeah, they're actually have a very good taste. Do it. they now? Yes. I'll tr- I'll just trust you. I'll cook you some sometime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's liver. It's yeah. Neil. Well, mine is is no longer by choice mm-hmm. about what I don't eat. Um, I had a tick bite about a year or two ago. And I have the same thing that his dad has. It's called Alpha Gal. And it Alpha makes Gal. You, it's a, a tick bite, and it causes you to be allergic to animal protein. Really? Right. So, huh. and it's it's like life threatening stuff. I carry a, a, a EpiPen. EpiPen with wow. me. Wow. 
I look forward um, to the day I can just jab that in his thigh. Because <laughs> yeah. I'd need somebody to. Oh, man. But, so I don't need anything that comes from an animal. Now, before that, it was a choice. I just didn't need anything. But now you won't at all? No. Interesting. Mm-hmm. It make his throat close up. It's, it really is yeah. kind of scary. Really? Yeah. 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 So any, like, mm-hmm. animal product will do that to you? It can. I think it was you that explained to me. I was all proud of myself a year or so ago because I had started making uh, kettle corn at home. Yeah. And while it was still damp, just right out of there, I was taking Jello. Yeah. Powdered gel, the, just the powder, <laughs> yes. and sprinkling it on there, and it was, it was delicious. I was just going nuts over it. And I think you came in here one day mm-hmm. and said, uh, "I can't eat that. It's got animal hoofs, cartilage in it. Yeah. That gelatin is mm-hmm. made from right. And I never knew that gummy bears. Yeah. So." It made me look at Jello a little different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wonder where that stuff in the Vienna sausage can came from, right? Yeah, I, there's some things you don't need to know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, it's I. Just better off not yep. knowing. So, so yours is just basically things life, you won't eat. Life threatening. Life yeah. threatening foods. Yeah. yeah. Are there foods you just don't like? Uh, I think that's where the, my original thought was stuff that. We just didn't like. Well, he needed the vote of sympathy because he's vegetarian, and we can't make fun of him now because he could die. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. I haven't thought of that. No, I used hey. to uh, – I, I remember when my mom – so there's two things. My mom would make um, Brussels. Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Mm-hmm. Yes. And they, and they came from a can, as Ooh. far as I knew. Yeah. And she'd boil them. Yep. Yeah. And the whole house would smell <laughs> like, like somebody sprouts. had an accident. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, was ne- I just never could get, and I tried to like them, didn't like them, and then um, before I moved down here, I, w- I was in Chicago. I went out to dinner one night, and they had roasted Brussels, hmm. and so tried one, loved it, mm-hmm. and learned how to do it, mm-hmm. and so I will do them now, and I I make uh, pomegranate molasses. Hmm. And we'll drizzle that on top of it, and that's a perfect combination. So I like that now. Hmm. I used Those to are not good. like garlic too. That never did anything for me as a kid. I hated it. Mm-hmm. And then same restaurant, I had roasted garlic. Oh in yes. Went, I didn't know it was sweet. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> yeah. You, you would think that you couldn't eat. More than one of those little cloves, but you can eat a handful oh, yeah. of them if you cook them. I mean, if you roast them up, mm-hmm. you might not want to eat a handful of them, but you can. Well, unless the company with you is also eating them. Yes. Exactly. Somebody think he's been on a bender all night long. <laughs> you what? A Brussels sprout bender. <laughs> no, I didn't know this. I like, again, grew up kind of naive, and I went to work for this pretty big company, and I kept noticing <laughs> this girl at the front desk, and she smelled like garlic <laughs> and I, I was like does this girl just love like Italian food or what and they're like no she drinks all weekend and it's coming out her pores and ah, she smells like garlic yep. it's like oh okay interesting yep so you functioning alcoholics we smell you <laughs> the uh, uh, the visuals today right it's kind of confusing in a way I mean there's a lot of them You're welcome. they're all over the place uh, I won't tell my story about my venture with the uh, Google Gemini into the AI world, but no, no, do not. <laughs> yeah, is that a visual piece of software? I mean, it creates v- images or what no, is no. it? No, it will. It I asked it to write me a song. song. It wrote a song. I think oh. I sent that to you. Oh, that's what that was. That's yeah. what that was. It's frightening. Yeah, there were some lyrics in there that I kind of went. Hmm. It's frightening. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we'll move on. So this was a condensed front porch visit, but it was very powerful. <laughs> it much had, like his sermons. Much like your sermons, H. All because the prices of lumber have skyrocketed. Exactly, and the ports. And porch is smaller than Well, you know our number one front porch critiquer, yeah. Suzanne, yeah. in Arkansas, will take notice of this. And we may get mail for everybody about <laughs> more. But now... Uh, I guess partially for her benefit today, we jam packed this one full of lots of <laughs> information. Imagery. Yeah, lots of imagery. <laughs> Colorful images. Next week, we're going to talk on the front porch about foods. It started out, I was going to ask you guys what your favorite sandwich was and how you build the perfect sandwich so we could mm-hmm. compare how each other's doing it wrong. But then I got to thinking, no, it's not just about how you make a sandwich, it's about why you make a certain sandwich. 
and I think I think a lot of food like that is connected to something in your memory somewhere hmm. that you just feel an attachment to a certain food or something. So we will explore that a little bit next week. The psychology of your favorite food. Yes. Comfort food. Yes. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, you know, actually for like six or eight months, I've been trying to figure out, mentally figure out how to uh, uh, develop a front porch topic that's built around how you build a sandwich. But it just never could get off the ground. It's like something was missing, and it dawned on me finally. that We need that emotion. Not how you build the sandwich, but why. It's why you build that sandwich. Wow, deep thoughts. Deep thoughts. Speaking of deep thoughts, we'll take a break, come back, talk about some stuff we found in the Bible. Always good deep thoughts there. Agree? Yep. We'll be back. And now, here is a man who will show you how to feel better, look better, Jack LaLanne. All right, now I want you to sit down in your favorite chair for just a moment, because I have something that, that's going to be of utmost importance to you. Here comes the chair bit. Try this one. Here's one for the old midsection. Scoot right down your chair. That's it. First, your right knee into your chest, then your left knee into your chest. Ready? Begin. One, two, three, four. You may notice at first that some of these movements may be a little uh, uncomfortable for them in the lower leg. Hang on to your back of your leg, just like this. Now, and scribe a circle with your foot. Begin. Boy, is that a wonderful one to trim up the old ankle? You know what just popped in my head? Ah, how about the hands? Look at your hands. Come here, come here, Mom. Right now, let me show you something real great to help to improve these hands of you. Push hard. One, two, three, four. Palms up. That's it. Knuckles together. Hand rest. That's good. Wow, did you feel them? Now shake your hands. Shake them, shake them, shake them. Shake them, shake them. All right. Just shake them again. Shake them. That's it. Shake them. Come on. Shake them. Fine. If you appreciate what this dedicated man is doing for your health and figure, then tell a friend about the Jack LaLanne Show. This channel daily. Hey, we're back, and um, I'm not going to blab a lot about the Bible. I've been doing that for a year and a half about how amazed I am at the Bible. Today, I'm going to let the Bible speak for itself. And I expect to be amazed, as I think you will be too, before this is over. We'll move into a section of talking about things in the Bible, and I don't feel quite call, uh, quite qualified enough to begin that, so I'm going to let the... Uh, professionals across the table from me begin that and then i'll just chime in as necessary <laughs> <laughs> you straighten us out along the way yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll appreciate yeah, I'll get that back on the road we've been uh we've been reading in the book of matthew um looking at parables and different teachings of jesus but one of the things that he brings up is this requirement for forgiveness and it's really kind of a punch in the nose when he says if you won't forgive other people i'm not going to forgive you so uh, how why do you think Jesus gives us that command, and how do we do that? He was looking at you. He was looking over here, wasn't he? <laughs> he didn't look at me. <laughs> Your question was, why, why would he give why you Why does a, Jesus put such a strong emphasis on making us forgive other people? It, was it a command? Well, it's a, a warning. If you don't forgive other people, I won't forgive you. Well, uh, it seems like, it like a it seems like his whole thing uh, was built around loving God, but then the second part of that is loving somebody else. It goes back to my old recycle image. When I see the recycle image, that's what I see. Mm-hmm. I'm loving God. He's sending it back down to somebody else. They're sending it over to me, and then it goes right back. That Every time I see the recycle image, that's what I think about. I've, I've taken that over, but I'm assuming <laughs> – it's hard to figure out why he would say things he says, I think. But I'm assuming that uh, a lot of that has to do with – that's a pretty basic instruction and and very easy for anybody to understand. Why would I want you to forgive me if I'm not going to be willing to do that same thing back? To me, if you can learn that little thing right there, you're, you're off the ground and running towards understanding what the whole faith thing's about. And uh, why, actually, why you would even uh, still exist? Because you have a you have a role. I think you have a role uh, in this whole thing more than just I'm saved. I'm good. He's giving you a role here too, because you're going to have people you're going to have to forgive, yep. and you're going to do dumb stuff that you're going to need forgiveness for. So to me, it's a pretty basic thing that he laid out there. Something that 
that it keeps you in check, you know, with mm-hmm. yourself too. Mm-hmm. So that's just off the cuff gut reaction to your question. No, that's good. Yeah, and it's. I think that also hits real strongly <clears throat> at the whole thing about the thing that C.S. Lewis said about you're either God centered or God and others centered or you're self centered. One of the two. Mm-hmm. And I struggled with that the first time I read it and I really understood what it was saying is surely you make decisions about things based on something else. No, you really don't. It's either motivated by my self-determination, my self-perseverance, my self-importance, or I'm focused on being who God wants me to be. And that's a struggle because I never hit that mark. But to keep that in focus of forgiveness and, and keeping that frame of mind, I have to do that when I drive. You know, I have to <laughs> I have to operate with, come on over. I'm a Christian. Come on over here. You get in front of me. Go right ahead. I know you're in a hurry. Let me help you out. I'll just slow down so you don't have to yeah. have to fight it. But I think it's a I think it's a state of mind mm-hmm. that he's wanting us to operate in all the time. It's almost like he's he, he's reminding you all through the through the Bible that it's about you, but it's not about you. Yes. It's a constant reminder that you're not the only person that he created, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Not to be selfish, all that, et cetera. Yeah. I'm going to think- try driving that way. <laughs> yeah. Makes things yeah. a lot nicer. <laughs> Welcome to Nashville. We're not trying to run you off the road. It only seems like it. I That's, think yeah. that, you know, to forgiveness, <laughs> it's for both parties. Um, one, it's for that person that's wronged you in some way. But it's also for you because when we carry unforgiveness, you know, it's amazing that science starts to catch up with our theology. And they talk about now how much uh, stress is bad for our health. You know, they're always talking about exercise, eat better, cut down on your stress. Well, part of stress is is this angst that we have mm-hmm. against ourselves but also against other people. Well, that, that guy over there, he just screwed me over, and he deserves to – you know, run, get run off the road or whatever. He didn't let me in, and I'm not going to let him in. And, and we carry all this pent-up frustration in us. And, you know, I think part of what Christ is trying to teach us is you need to forgive other people because that that lets it go in you. Uh, you know, the old saying that uh, bitterness is a poison that you drink hoping the other guy will die. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> I, think that about, I think that about forgiveness. We feel like if we hold a grudge, if we – tell ourselves I'll never forgive you for what you've done to me thinking that that somehow fixes the offense really what it does is just hurts us Mm -hmm. and there are some there are some really bad things that happen to people you know I was talking with a small group here recently and you know we we recognized in our in our lives that you know there's not something that's happened to us where we just don't feel like we could forgive somebody but I mean, you know, if somebody hurt your child or killed your child or killed your parents or whatever, Mm. you know, that's a lifetime of loss Mm -hmm. that would be hard to forgive. So I do I do think we can sort of make that statement flippant sometimes. And I don't think it means that we just automatically forget what happened. You can't you can't you can't forget something. Right. So I think I think it trips a lot of people up when they're trying to learn how to be christian yep uh that you might always remember things and have a really bad feeling about it but i can i can see the older i get the more i can see how i used to wonder how uh uh, you would see families you know and someone in their family was murdered Mm -hmm. and they would want to speak at sentencing and they would stand up there and say i forgive you Mm -hmm. i used to really wonder but then as i understood there's a difference in forgive and forget yeah and if those people couldn't forgive that person yeah it would eat them up the rest of their life too yep you know something i've discovered about humans and it's uh lined up with what we're talking about here if somebody does something to me that i don't like and it just really ticks me off you know and i go into that mode you're talking about i want revenge i'm just mad and i want to see justice done if i spend an hour of my time feeling that way 
what I've come to realize is the person that did that spent the minute they they were doing that and probably didn't think one more thing about it after that. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're over here spending all your time stressing and worrying and being that way when you're not getting that back from from anybody else. Mm -hmm. Forgive them. And you might you might kind of be able to forget some of that too. Mm. I I've had some good spats with some people that I'm great friends with today. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, some of y'all are sitting here at the table. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Just had to lighten no, it up no. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, and and you know, some of that too is uh, about having. I think is about having an attitude of grace mm. uh, toward other people and extending grace and that's especially when you don't want to um, just feeling the extending the benefit of the doubt I guess in, in a lot of situations so so I was thinking as I'm reading through the the passage about um, Jesus leaving the 99 to go after the one um, I remember I was in Italy and in Rome where the Vatican is and they have probably the largest collection of art uh, in the world, but amazing things. The Sistine Chapel is is fabulous. Um, but out of all of the big stuff that they had, the one thing that I remember that moved me most was uh, it's a little bronze statue on top. Uh, it was on top of a great big, like a rock, and on top of that was Jesus. And there was a flock of sheep behind him, and he had the one lamb on his shoulders. And I came to that passage in here where it talks about him, you know, leaving the 99 to go get that one and how much he valued every one of us. And the, uh, the whole thing of him ha having the rod and the staff and the shepherd mm -hmm. having that and wondering, because... I don't think the more I learned about the staff part of it, or the was it the rod or the staff, to corral the the sheep, not to hurt them with it, mm -hmm. but to guide them and direct them and and bring them back into the fold mm -hmm. where they need to be. And I was kind of curious. I just wondering, you guys, have you ever felt like you needed to do that with somebody that's a friend or a relative? Sometimes the people at this table. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it keeps coming back to the wow. table here. <laughs> this table is marked. <laughs> right. but, you know, I uh, I read some somewhere once upon a time or heard uh, on a radio program somebody talking. It may have been Charles Stanley or Chuck Swindoll. Um, you used to listen to both those guys a lot. Mm -hmm. I think it was one of those guys was saying that in those days that uh, staff, mm -hmm. if there was a sheep that just constantly was doing that, they would use that staff and put it somehow around their leg and almost break that leg over that staff, Ooh. which would cause it to limp around and not run off. I thought that's some that's kind of an amazing thought right there about. I've had that done to me several times. I believe believe God has a uh, has about broke my leg a few times to get me to it's stay. Yeah, yeah. kind of keep me stay there. I wish I could remember that whole story, but that was the basic of what the basic. Well, it's kind of like a story where a farmer will hurt a tree with an axe on the on the base of it on the trunk if it's producing too much foliage and not enough fruit, and it will help it to readjust itself hmm. to produce more fruit when you were telling that story Neil is like I, I thought back you know I've done some crazy things in my preaching uh, debut uh, <laughs> so we did a uh, Easter program one time and I got this idea I wanted a, I wanted a baby sheep and somebody <laughs> found me one and uh, it's good already here yeah, it is coming yeah, yeah. and uh, <laughs> you know while that's a beautiful picture of a shepherd walking out with a sheep over his shoulders, you know, I would challenge our listeners, <laughs> go home and put your Labradoodle or your, you know, put put that uh, dog over your shoulder. Try to walk somewhere. And walk around <laughs> and think about 
you know, just the, what's going on there. And I mean, it's, it's smelly, it's uncomfortable. Uh, pretty mm. sure the little goat or little sheep that I had, pretty sure he either sweat on me really bad or peed on me. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of a messy situation, but which is a great reality to what Christ's forgiveness for us is. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, it is not e- it's not easy for us to forgive, but I think that's why he commands us to forgive because he's mm. like, look, if I can do all this for you, why can't – and he forgave us everything. Why can't you forgive that one person that they stole that dollar from you? You know, or took your girlfriend away from you in middle school, and you've hated them ever since. Well, bless God. You know, I I took all this stuff away, and it was messy, and it was harsh, mm. and it stunk, and it cost me something. And you know, I think about those pictures, and you're right; it is a beautiful picture, but behind the beautiful picture. Mm. is the nastiness of it. Hey, I'll tell you, wow. it's hard to forgive yourself for things. Great point, yeah. I mean, it yeah. takes forever Yeah. sometimes for me to kind of yeah. get past things I've done. Ghosts, in our yeah. skeletons in our closet, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. it goes back to that, you know, you may never forget things, but you can, uh, and you can forgive yourself, if, and you, you're better off for it if you do. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of opens up some room there for something else, you know. We also looked in the scripture this week about um, having enough having enough uh, love for somebody that we go and try to reconcile them. You know, Matthew's gospel talks about if somebody's wronged you, it's our responsibility to go to them personally. Again, part of that is to help them be better, but part of that is to help you really forgive them. And so he talks about you go to them in private, and if you do that, you've won back a brother. If they won't listen, then you take somebody else with you. If that doesn't work, you know, his ultimate thing is take it to the church. And then he tells the church how to deal with people who are unrepentant. But I think the whole point of that passage of Scripture is reconciliation. And how think about how far we've come from that because now we hide behind our Facebook account. Uh, we hide behind our texts and the emails. Because we really don't want to go talk to somebody face to face. We we'd rather talk about them than talk to them. Mm. And uh, again, the science is telling us we have. I hear more about mental health today than ever yes. before. Maybe it's because we're trying to do things in an ungodly way. Um, maybe if we deal with people and how they've hurt us and talk it out. That kind of sounds like counseling, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And maybe I wouldn't have to go pay a counselor to tell me why I can't sleep at night. <laughs> mm-hmm. You talk as much different face to face here than it, it is on these, these phones we used to. Right. Absolutely, because you you don't have inflection on phones. You can't really tell emotions. All all the things you know we laugh about in staff. I, every time I send out some kind of blanket email, somebody will come back to me. Were you upset about something? Right. <laughs> yeah. Nope, not at all. Just Can't trying tell. to, yep. just trying to get get a message to everybody. But now, in time. fairness, with you, HD, it's, uh, <laughs> that can happen in person too, because of that filter issue that you <laughs> right, have there. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we all know about it. Yeah. So. Thank you. Well, that's another element that enters into it too. Is what you were talking about. What was the percentage of people that that filter their photographs? Eighty five. Eighty five to ninety five percent of women. So yeah. Sorry, I'll you, cut that gap out. This is my new five-minute warning. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll cut that. Out. Talk to the hand. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> yeah. See the yeah. misunderstanding. Right. Right. Okay. But that's a, um, you know, the the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and that's exactly what that is. Is people want to feel, they want to feel something, whether it's I need to filter my photographs so that I look more presentable to all of the people that are on Facebook, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to put my my unmade up face or my uncoiffed hair or my un whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Quaffed, that's the word of the day. Oh. I'm gonna have to look that one up. Yeah, yeah it's in there. There's uh, been a lot of talk recently from different people about these filters and mm-hmm. yeah. seeing yourself. I've heard that well several soft, different times. Soft focus was always the the thing where you wouldn't have the focus be really sharp on right. it and that does away from a photography standpoint that does away with a lot of wrinkles and wow. and that kind of stuff right, right. mtb and could really use that I've, i could I've, use some of that i've looked at some of our videos we really could use some filtering well, listen i've been looking at myself for about i'm looking at myself now on a monitor and 
I don't really still recognize that guy right there because <laughs> is me, there, I know, does not have jowls. Is there, uh, is there a software that can make a sound smarter? Uh, I don't think I don't think I can help with that. <laughs> but there's a politician on TV. Her name's Carrie Lake. Yes. <clears throat> and every time you see her, she has some that kind of filter on her. Mm-hmm. It's just there. I mean, it's not annoying, but you can just tell that that's there. Well, sometimes you're thankful for that too. Yes. I'm, I may try one of those. I'm still looking at this monitor here, and it's like, what? <laughs> Something's not right. Back to there. forgiving yourself. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Are you Are you getting where you want to go with? No, I think that's you know the key to all we've been reading about this week, and a key to the Christian life. You know, Jesus talks about a peace that passes all understanding. Well, part of that is forgiveness, and I, I appreciate you bringing up forgiving yourself because if Christ mm. says He's gonna, not going to bring it back up, why do we keep bringing it back mm. up? Um, but people need to know they can be forgiven. And so many people that we run into come up with that. Well, but preacher, you don't know what I've done. Yeah, mm-hmm. you hear that a lot. Well, I know what I've done, and I know what the Bible says about it. It's terrible. It's awful. It uh, would send me straight to the pits of hell except for what Christ has done for me. And so, you know, the encouragement I would leave with our listeners today is it doesn't matter what you've done if you'll turn it over to what he's done. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't have to be complicated. You know, admit you've done wrong, um, believe that he's the only way for salvation, and then confess him as Savior and Lord. And I promise if you'll do that, he'll pick up the journey right there and carry you the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. Even if you can't explain what happened, he'll... Exactly. I was just sitting here thinking about, you know, if perchance somebody is hearing you talk about this right now who's, who's not what we call saved... And they're like in their car somewhere, and they're thinking, but isn't it kind of crazy for me to talk to somebody here in my car and admit the stuff and ask them to forgive me and all that? Isn't that kind of crazy? I just want to say that having been on that side of this equation and on this side of this, the equation, crazy is not doing that. Yeah, That's what's crazy because yeah. on the other side of making that decision – you're probably not going to totally understand what happened or what's going on, but you begin to know it happened, and you can tell it happened, and then your head goes somewhere different to that, that you didn't dream up, yep. and obviously yeah. it's not coming from you. Uh, that's what I was thinking about while you – I do that a lot when you're talking. I think about <laughs> other things. But, but no, you were making me, better things you're making me it. think about that, and I do. Every time we do one of these, I'm, I'm really hoping somebody's hearing it that, can use it who hasn't been down the road yet uh and it might trigger something in them and don't make it complicated no right. because it's not right it's really and, not and even if you have a lot of doubts or unbelief be honest about that and he can hear you he knows your heart he knows your thoughts um i think it is good to verbalize it but you don't even have to verbalize it just in your head you know run through those things uh I, I am a sinner. But hopefully, everybody knows you're, you're a doofus. Everybody's got to know. If you look at yourself in the mirror, you got to know yeah. I've done some pretty stupid things yeah. that I need help with. You know, because I can't go back. I can't pay back my past. And even if I could, I'd have done something else. So, what the Bible teaches us is that there is salvation in only in Christ. And so. I hate to say it like this, but give it a shot. Yes. I mean, try it. Say it like that. I mean, the Bible says, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. A taste is just a little bit. So take, take a little bit of him and see if he won't change your life. Good stuff right there. Amen. Told you. Yep. Woo. Told you. <laughs> We're going to take a break, come back, play in or out. That's it. It's a new game show, isn't it? It's a new game show. We'll explain how it works when we come back. <laughs> that was good right there. Hey everybody, it's time to play America's almost favoritist new game show, Any or Audi, where we challenge our guests to figure out if a phrase we give them is actually in the Bible or out of the Bible. Sharpen your wits, guest. You're about to be in the hot seat of Bible stuff, because you're the next contestant on Any or Audi. Here's Mike. You know what? Fascinating. Uh, how dumb I am <laughs> because once in a while I get puffed up you know I've got a podcast 
we're on podcast right here, man. Did you forget to put push record? No. Okay, good. Whew. You, no, you we got never your stopped. logo on coffee mugs. I have my logo. That's my important. name is on a cup. Mm-hmm. But a Mr. Christian here doesn't know a lot about what's in that Bible there. <laughs> so <laughs> in your Audi has been beneficial for me uh, in an embarrassing kind of way sometimes. But it's, it's good to know that uh, I'm at the table with people who are willing to admit they don't know it all either. So, And I must say, Full confession. It's hilarious when y'all don't know something that's in there. <laughs> it's just hilarious to me. Well, and it's uh, I, I love busting your chops right here live and in front of people. It's just fun. It's big fun. But you know what? I, I suspect it's kind of beneficial for people to see you guys mess up. So I'm, I'm here to help you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take the first power seat today right. and ask you guys something, and you can tell me, is it an any or an Audi? And, of course, we don't have to explain how it works. That's just a big waste of time. Uh, if you can't figure out what any or outy means. In relation to? Whether it's in the Bible or the not. The Bible. Yeah, oh, things we that go. we say. There. Whether If it's in there, you know, it's an any, if it's not, it's an outy. Okay. If you can't figure that out on your own, we're not going to go to the trouble of explaining it to you. Here's my challenge for you two today. Good luck. There's a fellow that took uh, the Bible. He... he he kind of based it on the ESV version. Okay. I don't I don't know exactly what that stands for. Ex- English, English standard, standard version. Yes, that. Yep. I was thinking Entertainment Society of <laughs> Victoria. It's the equestrian. But, well, anyway, he's, he kind of based a thing he did with that, but he took that and some other versions, and then he would – his goal was to find out how many words are in each book of the Bible. Mm-hmm. Okay. And but he couldn't just you know pick a version and say well there's thirty thousand words there because the next version made it a little so he took all of the the uh, the versions and things he used basically the ESV and then he condensed those down into like Hebrew because mm-hmm. Hebrew would take one symbol which would mean a phrase or something right. so he did a, a really good study he's got I'll give you the website at the end here if you want to go look it up but. So he made a compiled a list of how many words are in each book of the Bible. Okay. I want to ask you all. Let's see. How would I say this is an any or an Audi? I guess. I guess this, I'm gonna have to ask you as a true or false. Okay. The book of Philemon. 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 How do you pronounce that? Philemon. Philemon. Yes, that. The book of Philemon. Has 335 words in it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> If that's true, that's an any. In what language? Well, now it's in the condensed version that he did. So it's not the ESV. He took the ESV, but he had to take that and uh, what do they call? What do they call a lawman's? Lawman's? L-A-U-M-E-N. There's something. There's a, a word that means, like I was talking about these Hebrew symbols that mean could mean a phrase that's got eight words long in it. Right. Those right. are called Lalmans or something like that. Hmm. I'm not good with that. Well, the ESV is a word-for-word translation. Okay, as, so. As much as it can some, be. Some of them are fra- or thought for thought translation, but ESV is more of a word Which would be word. why he based yes. it on that. Yes. But then he had to condense that also. Yes. Because, back to the original. Because there are just some English words that aren't in Hebrew. Okay. So nobody knows the answer to this, so it's just a fun question. No, but so 335 for, words, is that true or false? Is that an any, that there are 335 words in Philemon? Philemon or is that false? It's is a it? short book, but it's not the shortest book. Right. Third John is the shortest book. Well, I actually want to go back and look up and see how many words it says. Third John is third the John shortest. Is. I think Third John is the shortest book, number of words. Mm-hmm. Jeremiah is the longest. I thought Jude was the one of the shortest, right? Yeah, it's, it's a short one too. But 335 words. I'm. I mean, there's no way either one of you would know well, this off the top of your head unless you're Jason or something. Well, <laughs> yeah, but I study those things. Those things mean a lot to me. Oh, I, neat. Yeah. And here's here's why I'm going to say not. Okay. I'm going to say it's more because Paul uses lots of words mm-hmm. i mean he's got sentences that have yeah he wasn't 40, afraid to talk 40 words in it's a right. sentence for him um although it is a short book 
It really is a short book. Do you happen book. to know when he wrote this particular letter? Uh, when the slave ran away. <laughs> When he had a, had a little gap in time there or something? Or? <laughs> when, that, when Onesimus ran away, he wrote this letter and said, take this back with you, too. I don't know. I don't know date-wise when it was. I was just curious. Uh, um, 1831. <laughs> Probably. You no, know, all the New Testament's written in the first 100 years. Yep. Uh, I'm going to say 335, not. I'm going to say it's more than that. Yeah, I would... I, probably wrong but i think that it's it's paul's shortest book but paul still uses a lot of words okay so y'all are saying by me saying it's 335 that's an audi correct i feel a little bad in a way because of the formula (laughs) by which this was done yes and i'll explain something else about that in a minute so how how many hebrew words are in there it is 335 where's the hebrew according to this fellow's formula so y'all were Wrong, yep. technically, yeah. on my question, yeah. but hmm. uh, I guess this this question was meant more just to stir up a little thought than yeah. have a winner or loser. Uh, this website, H, anyone else, is called overviewbible.com okay. slash word dash counts dash books dash of dash bible <laughs> my pen just ran out of ink just go word back, go counts, back and watch this it really word did. counts yeah. books of bible with a dash in yeah. between each huh. and the main site is overviewbible.com it's a it seems like a complicated formula but when you read the whole thing that he did it's it wasn't complicated it was pretty accurate but now let me tell you how i landed there i just found the book of philemon and thought i'm just going to count those words and I got so bored in 30 seconds counting words, I thought, surely I can Google that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that is interesting. Uh, yeah, so I Googled it, and uh, instead of going to all the different translations, this guy went to the trouble of doing that, and it seemed like it would be accurate as far as uh, original language words. But So it's a little bit tricky because, you know, modern-day cultures turned that into That's a lot okay. more we, words. We have uh, learned to embrace our... Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so absolutely. I think you won. You lost, but you won because it opened your mind to doing some more. It's called a dichotomy, isn't it? <laughs> huh? I got to look that dichotomy? up too. It's a lost, but uh, one. Okay, HD, challenge us, would you? Okay. <clears throat> this does this sound scriptural or not? From above, the wicked shall receive their reward from above the wicked shall receive their just reward excuse me from above the wicked shall receive their just reward so neil something doesn't sound right to me about that I'm not getting any clues back from anybody it, here. No, it sounds like a truth. It does sound like a truth. But where is above? Right, which is what made me wonder because why would they say from above they'll receive? Mm-hmm. Well, that that could be that could also be in an ear and Audi. Is this is heaven referred to as above? Hmm. But I, I would not go there right now. But, however, well, no, that's a key thing about from above, right? The the, the what the wicked will receive their just reward from right. above. Yep, from above. And it's not it's just reward, not just desserts. No, it was just rewards. Okay. Good so good. why would uh, why would something in scripture say you're the wicked will get their reward? From above. Well, their reward is most likely punishment. What they've earned. It's yeah. yeah. Oh, reward doesn't reward. always mean it's a gotcha. positive. It's, I'm just thinking like Kroger gas points. <laughs> so <laughs> it's good. a little. I think you get more gas points at Taco Bell, don't you? Do you? I didn't know In that. Kroger? Yeah. Huh? Oh, well, you're talking about gas for your car. <laughs> gotcha. Sorry. You're still hung up on those Brussels sprouts. Other things, things we yeah. will not eat. Talk about. <laughs> yes. The wicked shall receive. Now, he said shall. 
Yes. So he's trying to throw a little King James Jesus. trickery. From almost. above, the wicked shall receive their just rewards. I would. My gut says Audi, Neil. And my gut says it. It very likely could be in there, but it's probably not. <laughs> You're using some of my old tricks now. <laughs> it's my. It's the in, way to go, Padawan. It's the internal lawyer. Uh, yes, all in there, huh? So, well, my my gut reaction is just being trying to be hardlined. You know, I think it's an alley. But as just like with you, I can see where <laughs> it could possibly say that <laughs> the weasel, the weasel, the weasel in me. <laughs> but now, so there's two things. So one. From above, the wicked are going to get a reward from above. Mm-hmm. And the second thing is shall. He threw that shall in there. <laughs> yes. Well, there's three things. The third thing was if you're watching, instead of just listening, H was really looking at his phone while he was reading this, as though, you know, he's reading it right out of Scripture or something, I which he to, might have been. I got to make sure I read it just correct. So I don't, I don't know, Neil. I'm just going to side with you. <laughs> you mean I have to decide? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then if you're wrong, it, he it's did it. My fault. Yeah. Yeah. And if I'm if I'm right, then we made a good decision. Yeah, exactly. Right? exactly. Right? Yes. Yeah. But I'll give you credit. <laughs> it could go. That one could go either way, which is, I guess, why you used that one. That's good. I'm gonna say it's in scripture. It's an any HD. We're we're settled. It's an any. It's an any. Yeah. Well, you should have been settled with it being an Audi. <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> it's my fault. Yeah. Because this actually was the other night watching with my grandkids, the Emperor's New Groove. Kronk said, From above the wicked shall receive their just reward. And I was like, I gotta write that down. So From what movie? The the, the Groove? Emperor, Emperor's, Emperor's New, New Groove. Groove. That's a movie? Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a cartoon yeah oh, i never fun. watch movies yeah, interesting a llama or camel yeah he becomes something. a llama okay so so he well, just made that up yeah. to say to somebody I, I will say this and uh you may have a little bit of a uh out here because i forgot to go back and double check that it's not in scripture somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so on a future episode it, it could be cronk as actually quoting scripture that would really surprise me but anyway we'll look that up yeah. uh-huh. during the break and then uh, come back with either confessions or <laughs> pride or something yeah. i don't know good round yeah yep both good again we won't beleaguer the moment there's an old word remember that oh, word yes. that's from beleaguer. way back when it kind of lost steam. It lost steam to shrinkle, and now you're aware of fun, fun educational. Fun educational. Are you aware of this? No. HD has made up a word in relation to uh, in, in your Audi. Fun educational. Uh, it's fun educational. That's going to go right on the front of the box. I can understand that. I we'll like take a break. That. Come back. Tell you bye. Like good church folks do. They tell you bye. You're not leaving the building until we tell you bye. <laughs> And pass an Auburn place. <laughs> we'll be back. Oh, wow. What a great contestant and a fine sport today on Any or Audi, America's almost favorite new game show. Study up, future guest people. You're next in the hot seat for Any or Audi. Hey, we're back. Neil, good to have you back. Thank you. We've missed you. Just so you know. Missed you too. And uh, HD, good to have you back. We've missed you. Finished one episode. Yep. We We did. We did. And uh, we didn't trip too bad. Too many places. Oh, we forgot to look that up though during the break. We just leaned back and drank iced tea. Stay tuned next week. Stay tuned next week. We'll have an answer to whether or not (laughs) you were actually. You know, there was a big controversy some time ago when you used the word brown. Yes. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of conversations behind the scenes went on between people. Is he right? Is he wrong? Is he right? I mean, that was kind of fun. That was fun. I still don't know what happened, but it doesn't matter. It was fun. This was fun as well. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Uh, Neil Andrews, H.T. Jones, I'm Mike DeBaptist. Good talking to you. And remember, we're all just Christians. Trying not to. Cuffs. Yes. 
Didn't right there. <laughs> not gonna do it. Wasn't that George Bush? No, not gonna do it. Okay. You got that in the back. Mike the Baptist.